In 2022, Marybeck Council teamed up with a project researching how to turn climate crisis into a serious game for residents to make their community climate resilient. When I heard about a, an adaptation game, that sort of took me back. I thought, oh, wow, we're talking about adaptation finally. <laughs> I guess I wanted to imagine what it would be like within my life getting ready for all you know potential emergencies that are happening or are going to happen to us. I am aware in some ways that I'm not doing as much as I would like to do. I want to actually go to events and do things and get my head around first steps. The scale of climate change is a vision of planetary processes and global forces over which we have no control. There's a gap between climate science reading the Earth's vital signs to predict possible futures, and society's power to make use of this knowledge. The ice caps melting and stuff is terrifying, but it's not particularly practical for us here and now. We kind of need local solutions, and I think that's where this game might be useful. We asked, how can we put that foresight into our own lives so we can see the world to come more clearly and adapt? In Council, we really want to better understand how people are feeling the impacts of climate change in their homes, in the places where they live, where they work, and that's what we're really trying to make sure no one's left behind. Working together with scientists, artists and community, Mary Beck was made into a serious game that simulates the next 10 years of climate change in their town. When it was ready, a group of residents volunteered to be the first to play, the adaptation game, Mary Beck. I will say it was the it was the gaming part of me that um, actually pushed me towards it more than the actual climate side of it. I think everyone ended up being more or less themselves, and that was kind of nice because then we discovered how close we were as neighbours, and I could point out where I walk and places that are important to me, and they were right there in on the board. And then once we got into it and started playing, it was like, whoa, this is this is actually like real life stuff, but yet we can do it from a safe space. We can just play pretend for a little bit, you know, <laughs> and just sort of stand back and go, what would happen, sort of thing. I can remember just when the facilitator pulled out the heat wave, it was like, oh, I'm taking a real hit for my, like, just overall life. That was actually quite impactful. That caused me to think a few things and change a few things in my actual life and house. So when that second heat wave disaster came along, it was more realistic to me at that point. we would sort of look at these scenarios and, and thinking if there was a flood and all the electricity was off for a long time and all my food was going off in the fridge and in the freezer, what would I actually do? I've never thought about that before. What the game does is it actually gets us to, to play ourselves having to make decisions, which are not always easy. Like, you know, do you save the cat or do you eat it? <laughs> and I think that one came up a few times. It was good because everyone bring such different perspectives. You know, we could chip into everyone else's strategy and we started playing, you know, along as a team. I felt like we did work together as a team as much as we could. So it's kind of creating a little micro community for that time. We're role playing ourself, uh, coming up with little solutions to these, these, you know, wicked problems with these other people and, and kind of learning from each other, which I suppose is what community is anyway, isn't it, when it, when it works well. A lot of my tactics revolved around what I would normally do, which is just, okay, make sure I look after my family first. But I was watching these, um, these, these ladies 
do things for the community before they even thought about themselves and watching their happy meter going up as mine was going down, I was like, oh, I thought I was doing the right thing. You know, that, uh, that was what I would normally do. But then playing with them and then seeing what they were doing, even though it wasn't in their own direct best interest, it was good for the community sort of thing. So it ended up helping out which then in turn made me feel happy that it's like, okay, well, we do have good people out there. You know, there is good people that want to do good things. You know, they exist. In some ways, I'm a little underconfident about my knowledge of, of best practice for the environment. And I felt confused about um, what I should do. But then um, the woman sitting next to me, she had a lovely idea, which was around a community gardening project and I was like that's brilliant but then I found out oh well you don't have to think of your own you could put money into her project and in fact her project needs a little extra money and so that started me off really nicely because I I kind of kept realizing oh, I'm gonna listen to everyone else and and you know support them if I see fit when the game finished it was a mixture of inspired and also not dread, but disappointment in realising the future world probably needs to get a hurry on to like mitigate some of those potential risks. So even though it was a scary experience, it still left me feeling positive and upbeat because I felt like I had more tools in my toolkit and it was really also inspiring to know that this game could be shared with others and um, make a real difference in local communities. I thought the game's localised format was fundamental. I, I felt that that's, that's what made it meaningful to me. When it's your own neighbourhood and you're looking at it, albeit in a stylized form, on the table with your neighbours, and you can say, that's my favourite park there, um, that's where I walk the dog, um, there's a great cafe right there. <laughs> then it's um, it, it's so personal. So there was a part of it was kind of like, can we just do more? But at the same time, I felt satisfied. Like we were all very proud of each other, which was awesome. And that's something no one's talking about. <laughs> you know, we're experiencing them already, but no one's really saying, okay, this is what's coming. What do we have in place? How long is that going to take? And there it was all on the board for us. It was a way of really getting our heads around it. And I just really wanted, my first reaction was just to say, hey everyone, let's come and play this game together. <laughs> I've just done this game. Come and have a look. Prior to playing the game, I didn't really have any clear idea what the predictions were for this area. That was the stuff I was like, this is really important. Is my street gonna flood? And that was really useful because then if you know that stuff, you can actually prepare for it in a very real way. As much as we love all the other species on the planet sort of thing, well I know I do, we're trying to save it for us. So why don't we get together with these people that we're going to share the planet with and actually do the right thing? I think that the game provides that platform like nothing I've seen before. We've all kind of walked away with a similar feeling going, you're okay feeling this way and here's some solutions and hear someone else that feels similar to you, you're not alone. It's almost like you construct it in the game in order for it to be real once the game is over. And so I think that felt fantastic. And also having the local councillors there was really important because it made you go, oh, they care and they know what's going on here. You know, we really are all in it together. All over Marybeck and all around the world, people are finding their own ways to adapt to climate change, to build an inspired and resilient future. Nothing is too small or too big. Focus on doing one thing, one thing at a time, so it's not too overwhelming. After that thing, you'll see, maybe you learn something from it, maybe it's successful, maybe you can do it better, and then do another thing, and then another.